Sorry about the video cutting off. Um, I planned to do everything in one video and the phone overheated, so I've turned the aircon down and I've actually got the other video uploading. So by the time I finish this, um, the, the other video should be ready to um, just publish. So I do do these videos almost live. So it's a Sunday and it's 1.30 at the moment. So this, this, this video will be up before two o'clock if I can finish it in the next 20 minutes. So the last question I was answering, I, I read it out, I'll read it out again. One of the things I find really weird in Bataya is the groupies, aka guys that hang off bar managers every word, especially in the Nightwish badge. You see these guys come on holiday and they look at these managers as if they're who Hefner with a harem of gills in tow. They shout drinks constantly for managers and act like, act like biggie, billy balls, big balls, not the manager's fault or anything, it's just odd. Right, so... The, the, the stuff you see on, see on Facebook is completely stuff you see in real life. I know business owners and I know people that absolutely hate each other. And I see them in bars having a photo together. And I, it's just fake. A lot of it's fake. Managers are putting pictures up of customers with them. And, you know, they look happy. And next minute, the customer kick, is kicking off, you know. And so whatever you see on Facebook, it's not real. These guys aren't really sucking up to managers. It's just a, a, a picture on Facebook, you know. And we all suck up to people that we admi admire to be. I've, I've always liked Gary Vee before, so naturally I would suck up to him. I, I flew to England and I seen him at a seminar. I do, we all suck up to people that we aspire to be. There's a lot of guys out there that want to become managers, or they just like the fact that the manager's got loads of gills. We do our best. Well, not our best. I, I, I always say to managers about personal branding. If I want to do personal branding, I'll just get a couple of girls in every single photo and everyone will call me a hero. I, I don't go down that route because, um, you know, there's no purpose. You're just, it's ego stuff. I, I haven't created a channel to say, look at me, look, look at my lifestyle. But I do show it um, in some aspects because... I want people to know about me and everything about it. I want people to see the big picture. There's no point in me giving data to people and them not seeing the whole picture. If I'm sat, you know, in a, in a room um, with nothing and I'm trying to tell you how to um, make some money or, or something, you're not going to listen to me so much. So if you do see the odd Mercedes in the background and you're seeing different areas of the house, then you'll start to think, oh, well, you know, Brian's got... He has got an office for the news, like he says. Oh, he has got a lot of cows, like he says. He does have a swimming pool, like he says. And everything matches up. So you you, you do get a lot of guys buying managers' drinks, and, it, and it's to support them sometimes. Sometimes the manager's just treating them real well. Sometimes they're friends with the managers. Sometimes the managers help them out with something. You know, there's a lot. It, it's, it's part of the business is to sell the dream and to pretend you're having a good time at all times. I always joke with people when things really, really get bad, I say, this is, we're living the dream, aren't we? That's what everyone says, we're living the dream. So uh, what you see on Facebook isn't real. You, you do see a lot of people having photos together, having the best time of their lives, and it's completely fake. These guys won't be visiting each other when they're in hospital. I felt left out in, in the past, years ago, thinking, you know, maybe I should go out more. Look at all these guys, they've all got friends with each other. And when I got sick, I realized that it's just a load of nonsense. They're, they're drinking buddies. There's nothing wrong with that at all. There's nothing wrong with having friends, but you should never feel that these are the type of friends that are gonna bail you out when you need to. You've got your bailout friends, you've got your drinking friends, you've got your um, friends that you can have a prank with. You just have to be aware of who's who and don't confuse it. Um, when I stopped drinking, I was useless to a lot of people, so I was treated as useless, you know. It, it's just the way life is. Um, people keep asking me, what would I do if I had a million baht um, and I came here for the first time? I think I would get a very cheap room and I would um, set out daily tasks, set out research to do, uh, maybe create a website, maybe try and be an influencer, you know, I'm beating the old 
the, the same story all the time. I think you should leave your money in the UK. I think you should get experience. And people ask me these questions, but I always want to say who. If you were a CEO in a company before, maybe you're not level for street level, you know, crap. Maybe if you were a builder in the UK, maybe you're used to dealing with um, people that are troublesome. Maybe you're more sociable because you've been working on a site all the time. Um, I don't, some people used to try and discredit me and say, oh, he was just a plumber from New England. Yeah, I was an electrician before, but I don't identify myself as an electrician. I didn't want to be an electrician, but people will always try and judge you of who you are. I don't care. Some of the best crypto guys and some of the best investors can sometimes be taxi drivers, and people will just laugh at you and say, that's ridiculous. Taxi drivers have all day and all night to learn. So when I was in the crypto world, some of the taxi drivers were coming up with the best stuff because they're, they're literally listening to crypto stuff 18 hours a day. So I never judge people from their background and people always try and limit your beliefs by saying yeah but you're just a janitor you can't do anything yeah but we're all different and it's your mindset once you shift that mindset and you realize you can do anything you want um i i hate it when people say yeah but i don't know how to run a bar we'll find someone that does learn how to run a bar go buy someone else's bar that and make sure the staff are staying there's loads of different options. So when people say, what should I invest in? I want to know more about you. So if you ask me a question, hey, um, I, I did printing and design before. Is there any room for printing and design in Bataya? But I'm sure if you've done that already, you've done research. But there is competition. I mean, there is a chance to make money with everything in, in life and in Thailand. If you do a better job than other people and you offer more value, um, Quite often it is cutthroat though, so always earn your money in the UK or wherever you're from if you can. I've noticed there is lots of Western musicians out there. Could I get DJ Dig gigs playing dance music? I had so many guys over the years contact me uh, weekly asking if I could be a DJ. Um, there's loads of guys, it's like photographers, there's loads of guys in town that are willing to do it for free. They'll do it for a thousand baht, they'll do it for a bit of fun. The nightclubs have no issues with these. Um, maybe someone can prove me wrong and they can get a gig here. I think if you want to be a DJ, get your own bar. Um, go work for free, find a different way of making money. Maybe do it for free drinks. Maybe just keep doing it for free and maybe one day someone will give you a job. There's Thai DJs out there. People often go to the best, uh, the lowest price rather than the best. So maybe as a Frank DJ, you have more to offer. Maybe people just go for the lowest price. We don't have DJs in our bars because the attention should be about the women, not the um, the guy in the corner. So this guy's got a good resume. He's been on big platforms. He's been on BBC Radio. If I was you, I would contact Fabulous 103 FM on his Facebook and just say, hey, Tommy, I um, I went on radio before. Do you have any advice for me? He's actually he's actually got Fabulous uh, 103 YouTube channel and I, I was pushing him to do his own shows. Maybe you could come on one of his shows with him. I think you, there's more money in talking about your opinions and what you're doing than there is um, DJing. You know, I, I think it's... I think it's great that guys want to hit, look, come here and follow their dreams. But unless you're going to like maybe Koh Phangan and playing once a month, I really struggle to see any positions in Bataya opening, especially when you've got Indians and Thais and all these people willing to do it for nothing. Um, maybe if you had a real big name for yourself, you could do one-off events. Um, so uh, crypto, I've already spoken about that. Lending money, I'll repeat this one again. Quite a few guys keep saying, yeah, but you're stupid and I hoped you learn from not lending people money. Everyone that I lent money, money to in that list was a business owner. And you can never say never. There's always someone here that has become a close friend and they just need some money because they've had a hard time and the money's coming next week. And you say, yeah, but I don't lend money. Yeah, but it's me. And maybe they've got some security. Maybe it's a friend of a good friend. And it... They, 
I don't think that I'm gonna lend money to people again, but there's always that one person that you've got in your life that can't afford a hospital bill, he needs some money, and you've got the money in your bank, do you let him die, or do you just walk away, or, you know, what do you do? You, you can't just sit there and say that you would never lend money. The only way you can guarantee that you won't lend money, again, is by not having, not having money. So maybe the guys saying that have no money. And yes, it's a good attitude to, say that if you lend out money you're going to give it away but it's also a good filter if you want to get rid of some bad friends or some friends that have different um morals to you i mean i i see money differently to most people so if i borrowed money off someone i wouldn't think nothing of it but other people like no i never borrow off people no i never lend it and some people don't like borrowing money i don't mind borrowing money for um business purposes i wouldn't borrow money for a, a, a stupid uncontrollable debt or drug habit. So there's borrowing money for business and for good things, and then there's borrowing money because you've um, overspending. There's different things there to talk about. Um, YouTube adverts, quite a lot of guys, well, not a lot of guys, every one person, every two or three videos, or, or I think it's the same guy, he keeps saying, turn your adverts off. Look, if you can't afford uh, 15 pounds for premium um, in the UK, I pay for it. YouTube Premium, there's no adverts anywhere. My entire family are on the same package. My TV in the living room, my wife and my son and my dad, they're all on my YouTube. None of them get any adverts. So, um, I've the, the phone. Sorry about that, my phone reheated after 11 minutes. So I've actually moved near the end of the aircon. I do have good aircon in there, but I, I just turned it on when I arrived and now I've turned it down to um, 18. So um, we talked about DJs, um, talked about lending money. The YouTube adverts, if I turn the YouTube adverts off, then th the videos aren't shown so much. So I spoke to several YouTubers about this and they say, just turn the adverts on and, and then it will, um, y your videos will go out more. And if you turn the adverts off, then the, videos don't, the video doesn't go out. And I keep explaining this, this to people. I think I've made $500 so far in a month. You know, it's not, um, I will try and reinvest that money in the channel somehow, but it, it's not um, a huge amount of money considering all the other things that I have going on. And my time is probably better spent elsewhere, but I have to, um, I, I have to, I, I want to influence and help people. That's what I want to do. It's not all about money. This channel is about helping people and if I don't have any views, then I can't influence people. This is what makes me feel good. So um, I'll probably just start ignoring those um, those comments. It's just wasting my time a little bit. So um, manager's earnings. We can't say that. I can't say that online. I really can't. People don't believe me. Um, they're like, oh, what? Seriously? Wow. And then um, there's a lot of people trying to put a narrative online that the managers get paid next to nothing. And... I feel saddened in some way because there's a lot of guys out there that are young and willing to learn but they're put off by um, the low salary that people are saying. Um, they get 10 to 20 percent of sales of profit, they get drinks, uh, commission from drinks, they get a salary. You know, it's, it's, it's something that's, um, some of our managers are earning more money than they would in the UK, you know. I. And, and it's relative. If you come into work for us just for money, though, you're not going to make it. You, you need to be, you need to love the ladies. You need to love the stuff we do. You need to love soy sex. Um, a lot of guys are, are messaging me about uh, good luck with my operation yesterday or today. There's a there's a Facebook post on that was a year and one day old. So I had my major heart operation one year ago. So I'm not going in for my operation. I'm not in for another six months of. Um, agony i'm good i'm okay so um a couple of guys are asking me about my wife's problem i made a video um but i, I only spoke about it briefly she had she had a problem um after her period and she went to bangkok patia for a checkup it was like an, an annual checkup and they basically said that her um her cesarean scar has a defect so the, the, the blood after a period is, is seeping through. Um, it's something that isn't a problem. It's something that um, needs to be sorted. 
So at Bangkok Patia, they said, right, so you've got this um, scar, we need to cut it open right up and do a whole new cesarean and then stitch it back together. Now, this isn't negligence from another doctor that did it, apparently. This is just something that can happen to everyone. So they asked my wife if she wants the form and she was going to do it. And my wife says, well, I had, I had a cesarean already with the ectopic pregnancy and it's painful with no um, hormones. She's, she's had two cesareans with the two children. She's got um, a daughter from a Thai guy that's about 15 years old now. She doesn't want to go through all that. So I said, look, we'll go to, we'll go to Bumagrad in Bangkok. We'll get a second opinion. They went up there and they, they did an ultrasound and they said, you've got a cyst at the top of your um, uterus. So it, it could be the cyst um, that's doing it and it's not, it's not the um, scar. So I'm so happy that I went to Bumagrad. I always go there, especially for serious things. So after an next period, she's going to get a, um, a, proper, a proper look into it. So we'll see, we don't think it's cancer, we think it's just a cyst, um, there's no real issue, she's not dying, um, I, I think that she's gonna be okay, she's, she's, she's uh, not worried about it, but she was worried about having to cut open everything. And yes, you could probably do keyhole surgery or something like that, but it won't be as good. Um, one tip, if you want off people, uh, coming here or life in general is self-awareness and discipline. You need the discipline to stay away from the bars. I've got friends here, they go out every night. I say move outside of Bataya like I did in Sadhip. No, they don't have a discipline to do that. If you don't have a discipline to move away from your situation, you're not going to have a discipline in business. Everything's going to fall apart. I don't always have a discipline. I get into a rut, you have to take action and just do it. You have to take discipline in some of the smaller things first to get fit for taking discipline in some of the bigger things. I'm going to do a video about that one day. Um, it's very important you keep control of your small nasty habits, otherwise they'll turn into big habits. One question, if needing a lawyer in Thailand, how do you know which lawyer to trust? And I've heard lots of lawyers can basically rip you off. Yes, they do rip you off. There's a very, very low bar in Thailand. Um, I think it's about one, one foot high. Um, and lawyers stick together in Bataya especially. If you want to make a problem for a lawyer in Bataya, you need to go to Bangkok and not all of them will do it. So um, they are protected. I got through six lawyers to find a good one. Um, you can go to Magna Carta, they've got a good reputation. People moan that you pay more, but I would rather pay more than I would with having six, seven other different lawyers that just try and rip you off and do all these stupid things and mess you around. Um, this is why I'm opening a law firm. Not because Magna Carta um, don't do a good job, but I want to create, create my own company and all of the people to contact me, YouTube, the media, everything else, they should pay my bills to the media and I feel that we can offer a, a good service, but it, I'm not gonna market by price. Some people keep saying, you need to do it cheaper than the others. I don't wanna do that. The lawyers, the lawyers aren't gonna be interested because they get a percent. Um, we're gonna have to, you know, ex we're gonna have to do quite a few things and there's gonna be two frangs involved. So we do need to make some money for our time. So we're not gonna go and cut the price, but we're gonna try and offer a, a good service. My partner is a frang, um, is an English lawyer. So that's very useful if you're speaking to a real lawyer. He's not an interpreter, he's a real lawyer. So um, would you say if it's worth lying up a lawyer before you get in trouble? Uh, yeah, ask your friends and family um, if they've had real experience. A lot of guys will recommend people just on the basis of a Google search. Find people that have had real experience for years and real problems and, you know, find out. Sometimes a lawyer will just say to your friend or family, no, you don't need me, you can do it this way. That's the type of lawyer you want to have. Some lawyers will take on a job knowing that you're going to lose. You need the lawyers who will turn around and be honest to you because they're in it for the long, long term. So, yeah, it's good, it's good to get to know one. Um, someone said about... Do you, should you pay a lawyer, you know, as a retainer? You're not going to get many problems in Thailand. The reason why I 
talk about problems is because it's my a YouTube channel and I have access to a lot of people and a lot of people contact me and I see things over the years. Um, I've got a forum, you know, with the news, other business owners. I see a million times more stuff than other people. If you're just playing bowls once a week, your focus is going to be on bowls and, you know, all of the craziness with who's shagging who and, you know, who... Who, who did what, you know, that's what your life will be about. Whereas if you're into bars or you're a business owner, you're going to see all of the all of the, the stuff kicking off, people getting ripped off, um, people trying different things. So um, when you listen to me, you have to take it with a pinch of salt. You're seeing the extreme, you're seeing the epicenter. What happened to Casino Bar? I think he had a five or ten year ban on the building. I think it was five years from the army. We all need and want money, but that's all you that you go on about. Um, I maybe I do go on about it a bit, but my ideal person is someone that wants to come on this channel. They want to live and work in Thailand, and they want to have a better life. So in general, money does help in that. I'm not saying make money and and um, ignore your family and you know, make money in a bad way. If you want to employ people and you want to keep your employees safe and you need to make money, this channel is more about business and, you know, uh, dealing with Thailand and maybe with staff and scams and all these things. So it is about me and I do talk about these things. So maybe if it's not for you, maybe you could go somewhere else. There's, there's other YouTube channels that do all sorts of stuff. NT, NDTVI Thailand, they do a great Sunday show. You've got um, Buzz and Media walking around town every day and giving you his opinion on things. With me, you're getting um, something. Phone overheated again. I wasn't editing, I promise. Um, with uh, some some guys keep telling me to chill out, chill out and relax, and you know, all the, it's fine saying that. But when you're in my position and you've got several businesses going on. When it kicks off, you can't just say, well, I'm gonna turn off my phone, I'm gonna relax. In theory, that's great. I would love to um, go and relax somewhere, but the best way for me to relax is to get my work done because all of the jobs that I need to do is very, very stressful for me. I've got a ton of jobs on my computer. When I open my, my computer, I'm bombarded. The best way to de-stress is by fixing problems. Once my problems are sorted, I can relax, but you can't relax and chill out when you've got um, so many people relying on you. You need to be highly charged. I didn't get to where I was today by relaxing and having time off. And people said to me, two years you need to relax and have time off. And I tried it a couple of times. And it's okay if, you're, if I'm on a holiday and I'm doing something. Don't forget, I, I did a video before about depression and about all these problems that I have mentally. And the reason why I have to do stuff and to be moving forward is because of I don't want to feel depressed. So if I do stop working and I do relax, then maybe I'll, I'll have all this depression crashing back. But I don't have this 24-7. I'm not one of these guys that, you know, work 16 hours a day. I don't respect uh, guys so much when they're... Um, when they're I, I used to know this taxi driver. He'll just he'll work every waking hour, sleep four hours a day. I thought, well, I guess maybe you, you've got a bad wife or maybe you don't want to be with your children. You know, hats off to him. That's the way he wants to live life. But for me, I want to, my whole point is I'm at home with my kids. So my child's in the other room there. I'm going to go back and see him. Anthony's at a friend's house at the moment. I have time for my kids. Right now, things aren't crazy. So I've spent about two hours making this video. I was answering messages yesterday on comments. I'm, um, I'm about two weeks behind. I'm going to try and clear more today. That takes hours to answer people. Because even if it's a bank, so I write banks. And um, Another guy said, how do you start a channel and how do you uh, make money? Well, for me, I've had 4,000 subscribers almost in, um, in four weeks. But I've been around here for 12 years and I've got a forum and... I've got the news and I've got all these other things. So that's actually pretty bad, really, um, considering. But I haven't been posting links anywhere. I haven't told any friends that I've made a YouTube channel. People have just been finding it and messaging me. Oh, you never told me. 
But I thought it's quite funny. I thought I'll just do this the natural way. I'll see what happens. I could put it all over the forum and all over the news, but um, I, I want people to find me. I don't want to force my friends to watch my crap because at the end of it all, it's not going to appeal to many people. I'm looking for those guys out there that are looking to um, do things and to expand and to improve their situation because we, we all need to improve our situation no matter what you say. Um, we're, we're always looking to change and have a balance. Um, so if you want to start a channel, Richard Travel started a channel while, while he's in America. You, you don't have to be here. There's another guy, Ali Brown, he's going to start a channel soon. He's not here, but he's going to come here. Um, you can do talk shows. You don't have to do about Thailand. You can do about all sorts of things. My channel isn't specifically about Thailand or Pattaya, but the people following it is, and it's related. But everything we talk about is related to other towns if you just copy and paste it and change some words. So, um, after a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours, you can get monetization. I got it quickly because I had a, a video from Luca Airport that had 120, 12,000 views over the years. So, I had the watch hours. And then NDTV, I, and a few other people helped me get over the thousand mark. So, I was able to monetize quickly. If you don't monetize, it's, it's, very, it's very hard to get your um, views stuck out there. So I've got a lot of uh, friends that are kind of stuck below the thousand because they can't monetize. So there's no benefits in having their videos pushed out. Um, why do I knock myself sometimes? Well, um, I have a high standard. So, it, you know, looking at my videos, I think, well, well, that's pretty terrible. But I have to look at other people's point of view where they're in England or they're somewhere else and they're working or they're cleaning the, the garage and listening to me gives them something, some information that helps them make some money or helps them move it or helps them with their relationship. So um, I, I don't think my videos are the best and I do take the piss out of myself because I have very high standards. I, I'm not happy with um, the Nightwish bars most of the time but that's not the reflection of the managers, that's just a reflection of these high standards. I get disappointed often with people, myself. Everything that we do, I get disappointed because I'm always expecting more. But that doesn't mean it's bad, it just means that I, I have these high standards and I try and push high standards on people without making them feel too bad and try to raise them to it. You know, there's a lot of guys out there that I see have great potential and I'm not trying to run them down, I'm just trying to let them know that they can reach that full potential. I'm not saying they're shy to anything like that. So um, I do have these high standards and I do um, look at things, but like I like like people are saying about my videos, you're not here to get entertained. You're here to try and um, change or learn or have a laugh or take a piss. Um, I've got uh, most of my traffic externally is coming from Facebook. So I assume people are sharing me in groups and Facebook groups are the worst for people to, um, for social uh, social warriors and uh, trolls and everything else. But whether they, whether they love it or hate it, they're gonna watch it anyway. So it doesn't matter if I, if I knock myself. Maybe maybe, I, maybe that can be seen as a bit negative, I don't know. What jobs are that? I'm gonna do a video about how to find work here. Go on DB Jobs if you want a job, or get a proper um, degree for teaching, or apply to be a manager if you're right age. Um, if you're uh, in oil and other stuff, like maybe look in Lam Shabang or, or Rayong, there's, there's quite a few places around. Check in Bangkok, but the important thing is most of the time, unless it's really professional and you're headhunted, you need to be there for the meeting. Uh, you need to be there to see people face to face. Another good trick is if you become well known or, or a manager in Bataya or just get to know guys in general, there's lots of guys here the work all over the world that can give you opportunities. I'm sure that a guy watching this can give me a job. I've got a friend with a media company that might give me a job, like even if it's just a percent. And um, I know lots of guys that have got jobs offshore just from meeting people in bars. So that's another good tip. You don't always have to look at Thailand. You could look at Thailand as your gateway to the world because when you're at home, I don't have any friends in Coventry that are wealthy. I don't have any business friends there. I've just got a couple of friends from back home. So 
the only way for me to have access to people around the world is by coming to Bataya. So that's another one to think about. How do you manage not having health insurance and does every friend have to have health insurance? I think you do need health insurance for a retirement visa. I don't think you need it yet for us, but there might be a COVID one. I'm, not, I'm useless with these things. I just ignore it. I, there's just no need for me to um, research it. I'm sure if I had to have basic health insurance, I could, but it wouldn't cover me for almost anything. Um, it would just be there for the sake of it because of my previous heart and liver issues. So I've had no health insurance, but I saved the same amount of money that what I spent. When I had all these health problems, I spent about three, 400,000 baht. And then I looked at how many years I didn't pay it for. And then I, apart from paying like the, um, the recent surgery, which was 720,000, or it could have been um, a lot less if I went to a Thai hospital. Apart from that, I've, I pretty much broke even. Ignoring the um, stem cell stuff that I had, which was super expensive and didn't do anything. You know, I didn't, I didn't need, that was more of a print than anything. So if you don't have health insurance here because you can't get it, then just work harder. And one reason is why I want to expand businesses is because one day I might end up in ICU and we're going to need a lot of money. Uh, um, what about uh, drugs um, for, for Thai people? He's talking about medical drugs. Um, if you have a government... Um, government cover like I do, you get the, the most basic drugs, you're not going to get brain surgery, you're, you know, for, you, you, it's very limited. People say that government hospitals are great, they're guys that haven't been to decent hospitals and they're guys falling themselves because they can't afford it, the government hospitals are great. Yes, I've had good experience in government hospitals, yes, there's good staff there, I don't think they put as much time and effort into, um, they do at the private hospitals, there's not as many specialists, you get less time, the equipment's outdated and not as accurate. If you go get an ultrasound at a government, a government hospital, you'll get one sentence, no joke. If you go to Brummagrad, you get a whole specialist, you get a page with every single body part on there. They'll do the whole area, they'll spend an hour on it. Um, I've got a lot of experience with hospitals, I'm going to do a couple of videos on them. And the prettier the gills are when you walk in, is the, the more expensive the bill is going to be. I would rather an expensive hospital. I don't think I would have survived this far if I kept in government hospitals. If you've got no money, government hospitals great. If you've got an infection, go to a government hospital, you're going to pay less. There's loads of little tricks out there. I'll still use government, government hospitals. I'm not being shy. I needed my stomach draining of liquid once from my liver problem. And they wanted 40,000 baht at Bumagrad, or 55,000 baht. So I went to Satahib and it cost me 200 baht to drain it. Um, yes, they, they would have pumped albumin in if it was in Bangkok. Yes, I would have had a comfy chair. I would have had a decent nurse. It would have been safe. I just got cut off again. What I was trying to say is I went to Bumagrad Hospital and I needed to get my ascites taken out because I had liver problems at the time. And they wanted 50,000. Now, they would have pushed albumin because they would have took three litres of liquid out. Any more than three litres, you need to have albumin in there. Below that, you're, you're okay. I'm not a doctor, but this is just what they told me. So, I had a choice. Sitting in an armchair, pretty nurse, uh, an attentive doctor, have albumin pushed in. They'll use the ultrasound to guide the needle in all of these things and they don't have, they they actually um put like a sheath in and it ends up with a plastic um tube sticking out and then they pump it out so i didn't want to pay the forty thousand. i don't think i had it at the time so i went to satip hospital i paid 200 baht they did it in the middle of a ward the nurses wasn't even wearing uniforms i don't know who was who he put he pretty much stuck a needle in me with no albumin to replace the liquid no um, ultrasound to guide the needle in. And he kept the needle in the whole time. He, he was pumping out the liquid. Um, that that created a bit of anxiety because you have to wait three hours. It wasn't the most cleanest and tidiest of places. 
Yes, the job done, I was safe, but there could have been problems from not having the albumin put back in. There could have been had problems by the needle not being guided in. So this is just one example why you should always use a better hospital because the doctors in a lot of these uh, small places, they've still got paperwork. Um, they don't check your files. They give you uh, literally two minutes instead of 15, 20 minutes. Um, there's a lot of advantages. Anyway, I'm going to save that for a hospital um, health chat. My phone was overheating because I was uploading the last video because it overheated and I ended up doing two videos. So I'm going to upload this now. I'm going to take my family out for a Sunday lunch and I've got another video ready for tomorrow that I'm going to make tomorrow, but I've got the, I've got it written down. I think I've got enough like for five more videos. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but as people ask more questions, I'll answer and I'll answer them. And there'll be some repeating myself, just like all the other YouTubers, because it's a content channel and I'm trying to deliver a message sometimes. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, almost over um, half of my viewers are subscribers, which is which is apparently pretty good. But if, if more guys to subscribe, it will um, give me some validation. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. See you later.